just a minute ago, I looked back in this cove and saw about six sets of eyes down this little channel. So I'm going to head out there and see what I can see. I see eyes shining right up, up, up. I see the eyes straight up. Where, where, where? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. See him? Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy, what are you doing messing with the bees? That's a pretty bear, but... Oh, he's looking, looking at his wound. Yep. I wonder what happened. Did the dogs, they couldn't have gotten him. I don't know. Dolphin's feeding over here. Right here in the shallows. Oh, this is great. Oh, there's a baby. There's a baby's tail there. Look at him. That was a little baby. There he went. We're going to take care of little Frankie. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest thing? Both of you. <laughs> Big gone. <laughs> Look at those little teeth. Mm -hmm. He'll get it. Oh, yeah, he's getting it. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. He's got to get used to eating grapes because grapes are a uh, wild food that he'll encounter out here in the trees in the late summer. As you can see, uh, green salamanders live in the remote areas that take a lot of work to get to. Really amazing. I'm very privileged to be able to watch them today. In just a moment, we're going to get actually X-ray a turtle. I can't wait. Where is she? Come on, we need to find her. Here's something from the canopy. Oh, look at this. Look at these guys. Look at them in the screen. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four. Oh, they're happy. They know where they are. They know that they're uh, out in the woods and they're looking for food. And what they're going to do now is they're going to climb up this giant hemlock. Fly. Or fly, actually. <laughs> it's a very big tree, so they'll fly up there into the canopy and start looking for uh, more adelgids. I'm going to release some of these babies right here along this old rotten log. Perfect kind of place for box turtles. Well, good luck, little turtle.
watch his head while you paint the rail. Okay. It's a beautiful rail. This is an old snake. Okay, where do you want me to start? Okay, you see that dark rattle at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Don't paint that. Paint the three rattles above it. Try not this to get, one, yeah, try not to goop too much in the cracks, okay. the seams, because that's what makes the rattle the same. It's a good kind of. How long does it take to dry? Um, it's gonna take a while, but uh, even if, as long as some gets on the rattle, so that we can identify them from a distance, that's all that matters. All right, so this is the beginning of a new study here at Urshine to see if this paint marked rattlesnake returns to its place of capture. The paint will not hurt her. And of course, each time she sheds, she'll add a new rattle so we can tell how many times she has shed, not her age, but how many times she has shed since we painted her rattle. There's only four. And here she is. I'm going to hand her to you. Here you go. Hold her like a sandwich, remember. And that's Catherine the box turtle, and she is, we, we guess, 60, 70, 80 years old. She's an old turtle. She's been around a long time. What do you think of that? She's a very old turtle, and she spent her entire life in these woods. Wow. She was here before this house was ever here. Isn't that something? Wow. I mean, look how close she is to this house. She's living in this house's, uh, in, their, in their woods right beside them. Mm -hmm. And she's been here for a week. She's come over here to lay her eggs. So now we need to weigh her and see how much she weighs and see if she's already laid her eggs. We don't know. Go ahead. Let her hold him. Okay. Can take a turn. That's right. Be patient, okay? You know, she's probably thinking, oh no, these monsters found me again. <laughs> so we can't hold her very long. We're going to have to put her right back down very soon. So we'll do that as soon as you guys are done. And look at the coloration, how dark it is. You can't see the nuclei at all. It's very interesting. Now, the, the greenish color is a very specific algae that actually provides oxygen to the, the eggs, hmm. uh, particularly to the ones that are inside who, who aren't in direct contact with the water. So it's a kind of a symbiotic thing. It's really amazing. Hey guys. Well, I'm down here in this pond, back here in the woods that I was telling you about earlier, and we're looking for this uh, unusual unknown salamander that we saw in here a little while ago, and I think I found one, so I'm gonna dip him up. Got him. Bring him up here and let's check him out. Looks like may very well be a mole salamander. Close up of his face, that's good one. Now he's he's heading your way now. Yeah, I think he's alright. Look at the size of this bullfrog. He is he's impressive. Look at his feet. Oh my gosh. Look at He's probably been here for decades. I'll well, let her sample him real quick before I rub all his slime off. See that trap is very full. Look at 
the shadows of all the insects that this trap has ingested. But this is the remains of the summer's catch of insects for this one pitcher. It's amazing. Just amazing. What an amazing adaptation for survival for a plant that lives in soil that is just not rich enough to support life. Growing down here on this old rotten hemlock log are hundreds of reishi mushrooms. Look at this. They're all over the place in all different stages of growth too. Look up here. Reishi mushrooms are an incredibly medicinal mushroom and they're very rarely found or at least I rarely find them they seem to only oh look at that one just coming up wow they only seem to grow in certain environments of course like all mushrooms look at those gosh they're like shellacked so pretty and it just rained as well so they're all damp wow a new turtle? yeah check this out guys a new turtle this is not Jimmy. This is somebody different. No. Uh, and but what's No, so Jimmy's nearby. Oh, it's a girl. That explains a lot. Yeah, you can touch him. Now, don't touch his face. His Her face, I'm sorry. And if he has claws. Now, look on his beak. You see that slimy goo? Yeah. You know what that is? It's slug juice. Oh, he's been eating. He's been eating slugs. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Go ahead. So, what do you um, what do you guys think of this? Oh, you don't need to hold that. It's okay. What do you guys think of this? We just found a new turtle. This is like unprecedented. It's very rare for a group of you turtle hunters to come out to find Jimmy to find a new turtle. We found a new turtle. Yeah, Heather, you want to hold him for a second? Sure. I gotta find Jimmy now. He's nearby. Okay, let me. I got him. You're right, and that's his antenna. Oh yeah, that's some sort of tracking device. Yeah. There he is. Here, go touch him. He's really big. Anybody want to hold him? Yeah. Anybody want to touch him? Just touch him, cause now you see boys have bright red eyes. Yeah, go ahead. Oh really? That's the difference. That is. Boys have bright red eyes, and girls have brown eyes typically. What is? What is the You can legs? touch him. His legs are so much more orange. Isn't they're it? oranger. Boys are typically prettier. They have, they're more like the oh, girls yeah, in, the, in uh, really other animals. Around. Maybe. Antenna? He's he like a real antenna. Kind of freaked out. That's a real antenna. Uh-huh. That's a real antenna. Uh -huh. Now look on his foot. What's on his beak? Slug juice. <laughs> That's right. He's got slug juice He's too. He's got slug juice too. This time of year... There's a lot of slugs moving, so the turtles are eating a lot of slugs. So if you ever wonder what the purpose of box turtles are, well, it's eating slugs and things that would bother your garden. Me too. You're hungry? You want to have some turtle soup? No. Good job. That's exactly what I wanted you to say. No, nobody should eat turtles. <laughs> Thank you.
love this plant. So useful. You can build things with it. You can even make a didgeridoo out of it. What an awesome experience. Oh, what do you find? Like somebody left some human waste on the sandbar here. Oh, that's not a good thing. Let's take a look at it. The bathroom outside, but they didn't get away from the water. They didn't dig it in. They just left it on the sandbar. You can tell by the ubiquitous toilet paper that human beings leave where they go. So, this is anybody's wondering. This is not the way to leave human waste in the wild. No, it's not. And especially this close to a water source. And in the middle of the river, I'm not sure if you can see it on the film, but there's a very clear demarcation line between the very sediment-filled French Broad, about where Steve is, and the Davidson River, clear water coming out of the Pisgah National Forest. Major difference between a river that's gone through agricultural land and a river that's come through protected forest land. You can see that clearly in the different water qualities here. log jam. What an absolutely cool place. I feel like I'm in a Mark Twain novel or something. You know, I haven't seen the pirates lately. The two guys in the raft with the sail and the dog. I hope they're alright. I hope they didn't they didn't uh, have some problems crossing under the 26th bridge.
area of intensive agriculture. I've been floating through cornfield after cornfield after cornfield. And it's just so much corn. But you know, we Americans consume a lot of corn, so it has to be grown somewhere. And this is one of those places. So take a look at these guys. This is what the otters like to eat. Nice. I haven't seen any much larger than this. Maybe this is as big as they get. I don't even know the species of these guys. But sometimes, you know, it's nice to not know everything. All I know is they're a freshwater mussel or clam type bivalve that is very important to the health of these rivers. Welcome back. It's now 5.55. Need something fun and educational to do this weekend? Well, bring the family to the Earthshine Lodge in Lake Toxaway Saturday for an event to benefit nature education. And this morning we are joined by Steve O'Neill from the Earthshine Nature Program. And who is this guy? Well, this is Potter the Opossum. Potter is going nuts over here. Potter's <laughs> eaten everything that we've, we've put out. Tell us about him. Well, Potter was a rescue a little over a year ago, and he was only about, well, this big, like a little mouse. And he was found in someone's yard, um, and he was so young we had to rehabilitate him, but everyone liked him so much they would pet him and hold him, and he became very uh, acclimated to humans. So he is now a pet opossum, which... Um, yeah, you know, he, he's a pretty cu a cute little guy, but really he belongs in the wild. And because he was habituated, we could not release him. And okay. as you can see, we can pet him. And he's very, fairly gentle for an opossum. Right. <laughs> he's got a good set of teeth on him. He though. does. You fed him a starburst, Jay, and he loved that. <laughs> well, Steve was asking if we had any fruit. And the closest thing I had was a starburst this morning. So close enough, but he liked it. And now oh, he's yeah. eating my Cheez-Its. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they are omnivores. They will eat anything. So for, for that reason, they're good to have around the house because they'll eat pests in your yard, such as, uh, well, rodents. Um, and they even eat venomous snakes, such as copperheads and rattlesnakes. I think Julie might like that. And, uh, <laughs> You know, so they're good to have around. Hey, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Potter, don't run you. off. There you go. Another starburst right yeah. there. Here. Here. Right here. And here. why does he, he make that me. clicking noise? That is a possum communication. And I don't know if he wants the starburst now. Look, a starburst. Look. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, he's cute. And he's got he a, is. They have a prehensile tail similar to a monkey. They, can, right. they can't hang by their tail and sleep hanging by their tail like a lot of the stories say. They can, however, pick up, uh, you know, nest materials, carry them back to their nest, pad their nest with it. Um, here. And they're very nurturing, are they not, to their young? They, they really are. The babies, when they're born, of course, because of a possum, is a, uh, yeah, I can't talk this morning, an opossum is a marsupial, right. they have a pouch. The mother has a pouch, and the babies will ride in the pouch until they're old enough, then they'll crawl on her back, ride on her back until they're old enough to go out on their own. Back. It's now 6.50. Need something fun and educational to do this weekend? Well, bring the family to Earthshine Lodge in Lake Toxaway Saturday for an event to benefit nature education. And this morning we are joined by Steve O'Neill from the Earthshine Nature Program and a couple of the animals you have on display this weekend. That's right. We have Tripod. She's an eastern box turtle and she is our mascot. Uh, she was found in the road. I found her in 2007. Uh, she had been hit by a car. Oh. Uh, her left rear leg was smashed so um, a, a veterinarian removed her leg, yeah, sewed it up, and she now has this little nub, and this little thing here right. is a prosthesis, and that allows her, it keeps her shell raised up on that back corner and allows her to get around very well. She's strong. She she's really pushing is. off on my hands over here. She's ready to move on. Yeah, she's fully functional, right? She's totally fully functional, um, and she lives in our uh, outdoor rehab pen at Earthshine okay. um, and, uh, for, for educational animals. So if you come up to Earthshine, you can meet Tripod and all the other turtles. There's about nine turtles that live in the pen, and this is a spotted salamander, and and spotted salamanders are quite common here in the mountains, but you will probably not see them very often because they're nocturnal and they live underground in burrows. Um, really? I've yes. never no, seen one. No. Mm -hmm. That's and, beautiful. Um, you can come up and meet uh, not only this salamander, but also we have a hellbender, which is one of the largest salamanders in the world. And um, we're going to have educational seminars on salamanders, um, specifically the green salamander and the hellbender. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have uh, experts from the area to talk about these animals, teach you a little bit. So, you know, as they say, never stop learning. So come on up to Earthshine yeah, uh, it, on Saturday. Now, is this salamander harmless? 
Harmless. Yes, totally harmless unless you're, you're a small him? bug. No, I feel yeah. like you wanted to. I'm very proud of you. I love the dots on him. Yes, he looks spot. like he's been painted. I know. I mean, it, it doesn't does. even it doesn't look, look real. real. Right. It's real. Now, well, who else do you have? You have another another friend here I with do. you. I do. Actually, back here, I have to go get her. Okay. Meanwhile, we're left holding the right. animals. <laughs> You're doing a fine job. Yeah. Now, do these guys like each other? Um, well, no. I don't really let them associate with, e with each other because they're from different areas. Indy okay. here, of course, is from Australia, and uh, so she would not associate with these two. And, of course, the box turtle and the salamander would occur in the same habitats, and it's possible the box turtle might try to eat, eat the salamander. Salam I was wondering about that. Oh. So I don't let them associate. You're welcome to come to Earthshine and associate with all these animals on Saturday. We are having a benefit for Earthshine Nature Programs. We are a 501c3 and um, we're trying to raise money so that we can bring these animals out into the classroom and teach you more about them. All right. It sounds like a great event. There's the information, of course. If you need more information, uh, you can go to WLOS.com, click on more info. We will get you everything you need. We had uh, Potter the Possum on earlier. We're going right. to have pictures of her on the website, and we will also uh, post that interview from earlier this morning. Thanks so much for coming. You have some really this cool... This has been fascinating. It has oh, been. Thank, it really has. I think I forgot to like interview, and I've just been hanging out with all the animals. <laughs> I think that's what we've both you. done. We've just... So you were, you were fantastic. So thanks Thank for doing you. our job for us and bringing in these cool critters. <laughs> Good luck Thank this you. weekend. Thanks very much. All right. And now Steve with Earth Shining Lake Talks Away has brought his, say it. Didgeridoo. Like, Didgeridoo. Thank you. <laughs> An Australian instrument. instrument. This is so cool. He said he taught himself how to play this. And at the event, there's actually going to be a professional didgeridoo player. And the turtle is reacting. Over on the other side of the <laughs> Yeah, our, our critters like your like your music. What is this thing actually? Well, it is a piece of agave. An agave is a cactus like plant that grows out in the That's southwest. Yeah, sort of like a cactus, like more like an, an aloe plant. <laughs> and it's the flower stalk. And it's hollow. And that's all there is to it. Well, I think I, we should let them take us out of the show. All right. Can put another 30 seconds idea. or so. Everybody else have a fantastic day <laughs> and enjoy the music. annual Mountain Wildlife Days in Sapphire. Great time to learn about nature, to get in touch with nature, to literally touch nature like I'm doing, of course. And we are joined right now with Steve O'Neill. He's with Earthshine Nature Program. Steve, who do you have right here? I have Scar, and he is a black rat snake, uh, what most people may call a black snake. And um, he is one of the residents up at the Earthshine Nature Center based out of Earthshine Mountain Lodge in Lake Toxaway. And, um, well, we're here at uh, Mountain Wildlife and Wilderness Days to bring some of these creatures to you so that you can learn a little bit more about these misunderstood animals such as the snake and, well, of course, the opossum. And so come on out and uh, meet some of these creatures. So what is so misunderstood about the rat snakes? Well, snakes in general, uh, people are afraid of them. A lot of people are afraid of snakes, uh, and there's many reasons for that. Um, one of them is, well, snakes are just unusual. They're different. Um, but you know what? These animals are very, very uh, special to our environment. We need these animals. They're ne very necessary uh, because the way they control animals such as rodents um, and keep their numbers in check. Um, and even this little guy on your shoulder, this opossum here, he is a very important creature to keep our earth healthy. And uh, so if you see these guys, just um, let them go about their job. Help these guys across the road. They really need your, our help. Uh, I think Potter needs a breath mint, by the way. I'm sorry. Well, you know, the hot dog. I mean, <laughs> I mean. So, you know. so Potter, obviously, uh, we'll see them out at night mostly, but, you know, they do have a, they make a valuable part of the whole ecosystem, right? They, they really do. These guys are like nature's garbage men. They eat just about anything they come across, insects, slugs, snails, uh, and they're, they'll keep your garden free of pests, for one thing. So if you see a possum in your yard, you know, just let him be. Okay. They're really good to have around, and a, a snake as well. Yeah. Any snake. For well, that. thank you. Uh, I seem to have a, a new friend. <laughs> Look at that. I would say a lot of them are. Most most black snakes that I've met in the wild are fairly nice, but you don't want to just go pick up a snake. I've been doing this ever since I was like your age. So don't go pick a snake up. You know, go out with like older people and have to teach you. Because um, what if you grabbed a black rattlesnake and he couldn't see his rattle? Or what if his rattle had been bitten off by a predator 
and you thought it was a black rat snake, and you just went, Ooh, look at a big black snake, whack! What a beautiful creature. It will be really interesting to follow the snake for several years and learn all that we can about his life. Not just for the amazing data that we're going to be able to collect, but also the safety of folks who come here to visit our mountain. By our, I mean not just the humans, but the wildlife that live here as well, such as the snake. He is ready to get out of here. And there he goes, back into the grass. See you later, Mr. Snake. We will find you soon. And he's gone. Hey folks, it's Snake Tracks Day 11, and I'm out here looking for Utsunati once again. It's been about a week and two days since I last located this amazing snake, and, well, he seems to be over here in about the same area as where he was a week ago. Um, I've just received his signal about five minutes ago. It's very faint. I don't know if you can hear that. That way. So let's go find him. Now this is amazing. Wouldn't you agree? That I'm sitting three feet from a rattlesnake. And he's not rattling. He's not even moving. You know why that is? It's because this rattlesnake is afraid of me. He is afraid that I'm going to try to hurt him. So what, he, what his tactic is, he just flicked his tongue. He flicked his tongue again. He knows I'm here. Days are long, time moves slow, without you love. Where will I go? Oh, I feel so lost, but I had to leave. What's a man to do but sit and breathe? Wasn't that just amazing? Beautiful. These animals are gorgeous animals. They're beautiful animals. They're not as dangerous as we believe. And they have a very important part to play in a healthy ecosystem. And as you can see, they're not out to get us. They're not out to attack us, chase us, bite us. Look at him. Has he attacked me? He's terrified of me. Remember that. They're terrified of humans. We are their enemies. We are predators to this animal. Getting very close now. Very close. She's, she's in this. Oh, there she is. That explains why... I kept getting such a weird signal. She's moving. I kind of figured that she would be the one to uh, be defensive <laughs> the way she's been acting. And that's the sound. If you hear that when walking in the woods, stop. Look around. And uh, you may have to uh, be very careful and walk back the way you came. Boy, she's really... Really a 
a uh, jumpy snake. Look at that rattle go. Moving right towards my foot. She's moving directly towards my boot. That's my boot. I would say she just has coiled herself into a resting coil. She crawled up, she sniffed my boot, she moved only a foot away, not even that, 10 inches from my boot, and coiled up. Amazing. Is she that comfortable with me that she's just going to take a nap here? Wow. Maybe she's accepted me. If so, this is amazing. I, I'm honored. <laughs> Yet, I'm responsible for putting a transmitter inside her belly. Wow, animals are amazing. Now, that was just unbelievable. I, uh, you saw what happened. She crawled up and sniffed my boot. And then coiled up right beside me. What was that? What was that? That was incredible. That's what that was. I'm just going to have to think about this and process this for a while. I'll get back to you. Oh, cut it out. I know, you're, you're a big mean snake. Yeah, no, okay, well, I'll put you down if you want me to, okay? Man, you're pretty, check him out. Isn't that something? He's saying, I've got a big old mouth and I'm gonna bite you if you get too close. But he's not, is he? Oh, look at the saliva, that was pretty cool. Yuck. I don't... That's a first. <laughs> Part of the problem here is it's got a wide head because it's a venomous snake. Mm -hmm. And its head has gone through a loop and is stuck on the other side. Until I can free that up, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. 
don't see any, any you know major damage. Mm, okay. Just the little you know little places where the scales are kind of raised where the net was. Mm -hmm. You see him in there. He's checking his head out. I don't see any damage on his head. Good. I think we can let him go. Hot dog. All right, so I'm going to let this little guy go. I'm sure he's very happy to be out of that horrible netting. Wow, I suddenly have a beard of Spanish moss. I had no idea. That is really something. But if you look at it, it's gray, but if you look closer, it is green. And when it gets wet, it gets very green, and the forest gets this really beautiful green appearance with all the Spanish mosses all damp and green. And then when, of course, it dries out, similar to the estivating resurrection fern, the Spanish moss turns gray. Very pretty plant, if I do say so myself. Makes a nice beard, too. There's bats everywhere. kinds of bat activity. This is great. Bats are disappearing all over the east coast of North America and it is thought to be because of a fungus um, basically known as uh, white, the white nose syndrome WNS um, and a fungus that maybe causes that um, called Geomyces destructicans if I'm pronouncing my Latin correctly which I was never very strong at. Um, but anyway, this fungus is killing millions and millions of bats. Well, maybe in one small part, I'm going to help. That's what. I, that's why I want to do this. This this monitoring project uh, is the first of its kind. Well, at least here, it uh, is gathering information on bats as they fly at night, hunting for food, and that information can then help the scientists and the wildlife conservationists and the biologists learn more about the bats learn where they live, uh, and of course learn about their population status. That's what I'm going to do. Um, listening for bats. Now I'm not going to hear them. The bat monitor will. And what's the bat monitor? Well, take a look at this thing. That is just so cool. So cool. And all I gotta do is drive down the road and I'm helping bats. This this is just awesome. Something bit off a flipper, doesn't it? Poor thing. If it was older, they would. Oh, she's got a tag. She's got a tag? Yeah, she's got a tag. Right here. Uh, XXK914.
they ride or where they are. Some build their homes on the shipping sands beneath those shooting stars. Some bright and shining stars. A woman like you was born in love with a kind and gentle hand. But I was born a rolling stone and I'll die a rambling man. Yeah, I wish I could have stayed. I wish I could have changed. But a rambling man is a rambling man by any other name. By any other name. Now that is Jimmy Irwin. Wanna hold him? That way we get it all. Alright, here we go. We're weighing Jimmy in the hat. Jimmy's not gonna like the hat. He's, he knows what this is all about. <laughs> no touching leaves. He can't touch any leaves. Six eighty. I guess track the hat. Is that a little straight thing? What is it? Goat? Uh, like a little bit of goat. Right here, a goat track? <laughs> oh, is this where you built your fire? Yeah. Great. And you might see a goat track. I wish I could have changed, but a random man is a random man by any other name. By any other name. I found him. Here you go. Found him? Yes. Come here. Yeah. All right, guys. I know, you, I know you guys want to pick Jimmy up, but there's a reason why we're not going to. If we pick him up, it will scare him, and it will cause him to do something that he normally wouldn't do. It will change his behavior. And since we're studying the turtle and we're trying to figure out where he's going and what he's doing and how he lives his life, if we disturb him, wouldn't he do something that he normally wouldn't do? He and was, that's he not was, good. He will squirt. He will what? Squirt. He'll squirt. <laughs> what does that mean? That means he'll squirt the people and it's pretty icky and slimy. Um, I hope not. What I'm about to do is take a DNA sample of the turtle that will be sent to a college in Texas called the University of Texas at Tyler. Some of you may have heard of that. And they're doing a big study there tracing box turtle DNA just to try to find out all they can about box turtles and their genetics. Pretty amazing Ooh. stuff. Why don't you put your hand out underneath here catch the thing. to catch his little toenail. Put your hand right under his you little foot. You don't want to catch his toenail? No, put your <laughs> hand like that. Don't cup. Don't put, cup your hand, Eli, like this. Cup your hand like that. Yeah. And when it, oh, to catch it, yeah. Now catch it. Don't let and it And when it falls in your hand. Oh. Uh -huh. Close your fingers, buddy. Close your fingers. What's wrong with him? He doesn't like this. No, he was like, wrong with, with us. us. Yeah. Okay, I got one. Okay, okay. ready? Hold that. Don't drop it. We're going to put that one in. Oh, no. And I will put it in here. Oh, that's tiny, isn't it? I don't see anything. There's one. He doesn't need much. See it in there? <laughs> hold that. Hold that. Specs. Let me see it, Chad. Try to get another one. Can I hold the other one? Sure. If I can get him to put a foot out. And that ends Frodo's tracks. And we have to release him because, like I said, it's... um just not ethical to keep keep a transmitter on him when uh, I'm not able to track him more than you know once every two or three months so I'm gonna release him right now right down here beside the cabin at uh, the Fortress of Solitude and here he goes can't think of a better place where this turtle could live right down here where I found him in the same orientation looking uphill near that stick there you go Frodo 
Maybe we'll see you again one day. All the stories that she did tell There in a stillness I learned her lesson well In words forgotten Forever pure Names unspoken And gone forevermore I have nothing left to let on her door And the mountain's gonna sing this song for me So if you ever find a box turtle crossing a road, what do you do? That's a simple one. You take the little guy and put him on the side of the road that his head was pointing towards. Because that's where he wants to go. Especially adapted teeth right back here in the back of their mouth. <laughs> tickly. Very tickly little tongue you have there. Oh, she's still peeing. Oh, good. We still got that on tape. Oh. If you look closely, you can see slug juice all over her pretty face. Look at that. Tasty spring edible. Well, some people think they're tasty, other people think they're vile and disgusting. But I love them. This is the bear's den. She slept the whole winter right here in this little hole inside this hollow tree. <laughs> this out. This is salicornia, saltwort. If I catch fish today, I'm going to use this to season my fish. Well, one of the seasons. Very salty. Ooh, like eating salt water. What I'm doing is peeling the inner lining out of this old cedar bark. It's very dry and it makes a really good fire starter.
if you ever see a cottonmouth in the wild, you really don't want to pick one up like this. He might strike. See, they look kind of like a cobra. Hear the hissing? Isn't he pretty? Look at him. They eat, they eat toads and frogs and lizards and they're harmless. They just act really big and mean, kind of like a chihuahua. First snake you've ever held? Yes. Really? I've held a snake before, but I, the other people were holding it. Like, you got to go see how heavy it was and mm -hmm. pick it up at the, at the back of it. Really? Well, this is a wild eastern hognose snake. So this is your first wild snake, isn't it? There he is. Just enjoy it for its absolute beauty and power, and don't kill it. These animals have a right to live, and they're helping us out, <laughs> and they're funny. <laughs> I have somebody I would like to introduce to you. Actually, I'm not going to introduce it to you. My friend Say is going to introduce him to you. Would you like to introduce him to everybody, Say? This is Crash the Opossum. That's right, and Crash came to us from the Asheville Nature Center in Asheville, North Carolina. You want to give him that little apricot there? Hold it in front of his face. Watch your fingers. Ooh. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, boy. And Crash, you can pet him. Go ahead and pet him, Sam. And Crash came to us from the Asheville Nature Center because his mother was attacked by a dog, and she didn't make it. And neither did any of his siblings. Where are you going? Woo! And um, so Crash... He's the sole survivor of his family. And now he's going to live at Earthshine and teach people like you about the amazing opossum, who really right now just wants to go hide somewhere and eat his newfound treat, this little apricot, the first apricot that Crash has ever had. Hit him, say ya. He's very friendly. Yes, he And is. he's crawling up onto my. <laughs> and he's eating the I apricot now. I wanted to name him Wanderer. Wanderer? Because he. he... Because he actually wanders around yeah. all the time. He does wander around, and you know what? She's right. That's what opossums do. They're nomadic. They wander everywhere. And so that's a really good name. So we can call him Crash Wanderer. How about that, Saya? Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> and he's drooling all over me, I'm sure. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> really? Don't see me. <laughs> so, do you have anything else to tell everybody about Crash, Saya? Watch, look at the camera. He's very so, well. He's very, very sweet. And he likes right, to down. wander around. Oops. So he usually crowds off when he's eating and hides. You're right. He goes and hides to eat because they like to eat in private. Yeah. And, uh, well, right now I guess he just figured there's nowhere private, so I'm just going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... Well, so if you ever want to meet Crash, come up to our, the Nature Center at Earthshine because that's where he's going to live. And uh, check him out on the website at earthshinenature.com. And uh, I guess that's it. Thanks, Aya. Oh, that's incredible. It's the most rattlesnakes I've seen in one place outside of a zoo in a long time. You run when you're watching for snakes. Mm-hmm. Dude, maybe if you get up on top of that rock, mm -hmm. right, you can get a... So they're going to start dispersing as soon as I walk I already see heads moving. So let's walk together, Steve, if you want to. Okay. How many did you figure? One, two, three heads I see, but there's more than three snakes there. Uh, one rattle's not even buzzing. I see three rattles also. Okay, watch them. They're going to head for the den. Yep. So there's two... Three, four. Man, that was quick. That was very quick. They can really move when they want to. When they're charged up like that, wow. 
Look how big they are. Those have to be females. Gravid females. What do you think? I don't know. So we have so four now? Because you can do an estimate on population by the mass states we find here. Oh, easy, yeah. Um, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Yes, you okay. are, Sia. Oh, no. I don't. 
got him. You're gonna, so you're gonna run, get the turtle, and then go to the stick and say, "Hey, my little friend, cross the road." All right, you ready? Go over there, my stick. Here we go. One, two, three.